Good morning, everyone. You can hear me. Uh, so thanks for joining our session today. And uh, today I'm going to share with you some uh, aspects around the GeoKnowledge Hub to preserve and share Earth observation applications. So my name is Felipe Carlos, and I made this presentation together with my colleagues Paula de Salvo and Calanco Asisim Canova from the GeoKnowledge Hub team. And we are a very small team uh, moving this initiative forward, but we are not alone. So we work with our uh, community and this community have amazing people that help us to keep this initiative moving forward. And before I start the presentation, uh, just to mention all the presentations, uh, this presentation, some examples we created, metadata examples are all, uh, everything available in this GitHub uh, repository so you can access and uh, use the materials available there. And to start this presentation, I will be, uh, briefly introduce you to where the GeoNolet Hub started and then we can uh, talk about the GeoNolet Hub itself. So, uh, the GeoNolet Hub started in the uh, in the context of the group and Earth observation or GEO, which is basically a partnership of more than 110 national governments and more than uh, 100 participating organizations and this huge community and visions of future where decisions and actions for the benefits of humankind are basically based and informed by Earth observations, you know, data, tools, analysis, and so on. And to support this vision uh, in the GEO community, we have uh, some data sharing and also open knowledge statements. So this help us to uh, uh, reach our goal using open data, our open knowledge, and so on. And also in GEO, we have uh, GEO work program activities, which is basically used to address environmental and societal challenges. And these uh, activities are always producing uh, uh, solutions and results to help uh, society to move forward and solve problems and issues. And when these activities are creating these solutions, they are not only creating results, they are creating uh, knowledge behind the scenes. So they have methodologies, applications, tools, and so on. And to help these activities to uh, preserve this, uh, the knowledge they are creating and share with the community the materials they have to help the community to, for example, reuse the content they are producing, uh, we have defined the GeoKnowledge Hub. So basically the GeoKnowledge Hub is a digital library for the Geo community and uh, this digital library helps uh, the community to share and also preserve Earth observation applications and also uh, the GeoKnowledge Hub helps the community to find and access these applications. So this way the GeoKnowledge Hub is a central place where the community can go to share and also preserve uh, the knowledge uh, from the Geo community. And uh, to make this possible in the GeoKnowledge Hub, we use a central concept called Knowledge Package. So this uh, concept helps us to share our Earth observation application uh, with the community. And to make this possible, in a knowledge package, we are able to centralize and describe all the resources we use in our, uh, to compose our uh, AO application. So let's say we used an in situ data set. So we can add this in situ data set inside our uh, knowledge package and describe this resource. The same with the tools we have used, uh, articles and notes, and any kind of materials we have related to that application. So let's say if we have uh, user stories or training materials, all this stuff can be centralized in one single place. And uh, when we need to, for example, define uh, the knowledge package, we can basically use metadata. So uh, we, uh, the, the GeoKnowledge Hub metadata is based on the data site schema version 4. So you can have title, description, contributors, and so on. You can also uh, upload files to that package. You can link the package with external resources, so services, files, and so on. And also you can create or associate DOIs with that package. And uh, when we need to add resources inside the package, we have the same structure. So to add an in to data set inside the package, we can basically use metadata, files, and DOIs. 
Okay, so this way we have two levels of definition. So the uh, knowledge package level and the resources level. So this uh, help users to, for example, define the whole uh, application context in the knowledge package level to explain where the application was used, things like that. And the resources can have specific explanation about uh, why it was defined, where it's used and so on. And uh, to show you an example and how this looks like in practice, uh, we have here a uh, knowledge package example from the Digital Earth Africa, uh, monitoring mangrove extension Africa using Digital Earth Africa data queue. So uh, they produced this knowledge package and basically uh, with the in inside this knowledge package they have a page. So uh, from this page you can access all the elements available in the knowledge package. And for each resource available in the package, we have specific pages with the metadata, files, and so on for that resource. And in this package, we basically have things like executable notebooks, we have auxiliary data and files, and also we have description documents. So they created these documents to uh, teach the community how the executable notebooks can be executed. Uh, what is the methodology behind uh, the executable notebook and so on. And also another thing we have defined in the GeoKnowledge Hub is some user profiles to help us in the definition of who can do uh, uh, what we need to do in the GeoKnowledge Hub. So uh, we have users, so basically these are community users and they are able to access the GeoKnowledge Hub and use the content available there. So they don't need to have any kind of login, something like that. They can just access and use. But if a user needs to publish content in the GeoKnowledge Hub, uh, we basically have another profile, which is uh, the knowledge provider. So these users need to be logged in and then they can start sharing uh, knowledge, uh, using knowledge packages. And uh, to develop the GeoKnowledge Hub, we always use a community-centric approach where, uh, as I mentioned, we build things together with our community. So uh, this way, our decisions, new features, uh, improvements are always based on the community feedback. And uh, for example, uh, the development uh, side of the GeoKnowledge Hub uh, benefits a lot with this approach. So, for example, in the last year we implemented various features in the GeoKnowledge Hub. So we have community support, for example, various ways to search content, real-time exchange features, interoperability related features, and so on. So all this stuff is already available in, uh, in the GeoKnowledge Hub and now I'm going to present you uh, some details around all these features we have uh, available. So when a user needs to search, for example, content, a knowledge package, for example, in the GeoKnowledge Hub, it is possible to use a thematic search and this uh, enable users to get content, for example, by uh, geo-engagement priorities like New Urban Agenda, Sendai Framework, and so on. And also by convention, so content related to Minamata convention and so on. Uh, also we have implemented a spatial search which help users to get content from specific regions for example. And another thing we have as I mentioned is the community support. So uh, this uh, feature help uh, Geo, uh, Geo work program activities to create the spaces inside the Geo Knowledge Hub. So in each space we have uh, the description of, uh, of that activity and also all the content shared by that activity. So this way we help uh, the provider of the content to keep things centralized and organized and also the user to get and access that content in an easy way. And uh, when a user needs to access the knowledge package itself, we also have a knowledge package page as I mentioned. So in this page we basically have all the information, metadata, files, and also uh, here users can request training on the materials of the package. And when they uh, made this request, we from the GeoKnowledge Hub team work together with the provider of the material to uh, create maybe a training session or a webinar to help the community to use that content. And uh, of course, another thing available in this package, in this page, is the elements available in the knowledge package. So all the, ma the resources are categorized in four categories, so data set, publication, software, and others. So users can use these categories to explore what is available in that, that package. Uh, and uh, another thing we have in this knowledge package page are the real-time exchange features. 
So features like the ask the provider where we have a real time chat uh, the community can use to get answers to, for example, to specific questions directly from the provider of that material. And also in the knowledge package page, we have the feedback space where the community can evaluate the content available in the package and also the structure of that package. So this helps uh, the provider to understand if what they uh, what is shared is good or need to be changed, need to be improved, and so on. And uh, as I mentioned, all this stuff is already available. So I, I'm now going to present you a very quickly practical demonstration of how these stuffs are working in the GeoKnowledge Hub. So we can access this link, gkh.earthobservation.org. So when we access the GeoKnowledge Hub, uh, this is the main page, and from here we can access all the features I mentioned. So we can search content using you know text, but we can also add uh, filters by uh, metadata properties, spatial extent, and so on. And when we go down, we have the featured communities available in the system. So Digital Earth Africa, uh, GeoGlam, and so on. And in this section, we have the thematic search. So here we can, you know, explore content by the engagements, so or the conventions. So this is something possible. Here we have uh, the latest packages published in the system. So all the new packages are presented here. And here, I don't know, maybe some internet connection issue. Uh, it's presenting the upcoming training events related to the GeoKnowledge Hub. So for example, this workshop is listed here and so on. And uh, let's say we want to access a content, so for example, related to an SDG. So let's say I want a content related to the SDG 14. So uh, I can click on this icon and search by that specific SDG. And in this page, we have all the content related to the topic I selected, and I can filter this to have more specific results. For example, I can have only uh, knowledge packages, for example, or only software available. So let's say we only want to have knowledge packages as a result. And then we can uh, add more filters like uh, by the GeoWork program activity. So I know uh, I want all the knowledge packages from Digital Earth Africa, and also we can have multiple filters here. And when we add this filter, we have the possibility when, uh, to have these specific results. And when we access, for example, one knowledge package, we arrived in that page I presented. So from here, we can explore all the content available in the package. So we have things like the, the real-time exchange features I mentioned. Uh, the elements of the knowledge package are presented here. We have the files and uh, other metadata available. So, uh, for example, let's say we want to access uh, this notebook, which is a resource of this package. So when we access this resource, we go to another page with the same structure, but describing the resource of that package. So in this case, is executable notebook, and all the content is presented here. And then we can return uh, to the package page again. And uh, another thing we have for this specific package is the user story. So uh, this is something possible, uh, and here we can uh, click to visualize and understand more where the, the application was used, so this is something also possible. And another thing we have is the communities, as I mentioned, so at this moment we only have four communities, but uh, all of them have a lot of content, so for example, for example eShape, uh, they uh, contributed with a lot of knowledge packages, so all the content produced by this community is available here. And now uh, we can return to our presentation, and I don't know if you have questions or if we can continue uh, the presentation. It is good. Okay. I mean, the don't interpret that as a criticism. It's just a thinking aloud. Uh, we have been working about the structuring the knowledge from the beginning of Socrates and all these philosophers in in, in Athens and so on. Now we invented books. Uh, we invented training courses. We invented several things to actually transmit knowledge. 
and it's really hard. I mean, we created libraries because classifying the knowledge is complicated. So I'm, I'm wondering about the scalability of this, of this approach and this, this idea of the knowledge package and, and so on. How really we, could, we will be able when this flies and really will be thousands of different things there, how we will manage to discover what we want, the relations among the different contents, uh, et cetera. So how we can formalize this in a way that is more digestible, Okay, uh, thank you for this amazing question. And this is something we always discuss when we are uh, moving the journal tab forward because uh, also, as you mentioned, it's very hard to keep things organized in this way. But we, uh, we are always trying to you know, teach the community this concept to have the community helping us to publish in this way. So uh, what uh, we have uh, a way to publish now and where we basically uh, go knowledge provider by knowledge provider, and we uh, work together to have this structure published. So for example, in the Digital Earth Africa example, we created one knowledge package together with the initiative, and then they started creating, and we helped them to revise and say, hey, this is in a good format or not, and this is the way we are doing this now, to create this culture and have a package, and then uh, to help us in the future to have more and more packages available. I was thinking how we could somehow extract the knowledge that is really significant for the ministerial, for instance. No, can we provide them with a, I don't know some kind of a small text describing the more significant knowledge package that could impact the ministries in the ministerial? This this kind of thing. So how how we after we have all this pile of knowledge. We really need some ways of extracting the relevant parts from, from, for each use, user uh, profile and so on. But, uh, yeah, uh, just a comment on this. I will present something. Uh, we started something called Feed to help uh, okay. and to create a way to have just a, a little description about the packages available. And the provider, for example, can ask us to publish this uh, briefly introduction about the package and to help the community to understand, oh, this is available in the journal hub, so I can go there and use it. So this is something we're also trying to, to have available here. I will present this. Uh, Thanks. Um, I want to have a bit more information about your, your roadmap. I remember that this uh, GeoKnowledge Hub started as a kind of um, prototype initially mm -hmm. that was, uh, let's say, uh, initiated by the, the Geo Secretariat, where, what is now the roadmap and what is what has been endorsed or what, it, what will be in the post-2025 strategy? Oh, good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, of course, we started as a, a, a prototype and in the last year we have the green light to start the operationalization of, the, of this tool. So since last year we are working in the features and also with the community to have content available. And I don't have, I don't know a lot of details about the uh, next steps in the management side. So, so we have funding to keep this uh, being yeah, involved. At this moment, uh, the Geo, uh, uh, the Geo Secretariat uh, Trust Fund is using to uh, keep this uh, tool uh, running. So this is yeah. basically what we have. And then a bit of link question. You also have the, the Geo portal, the, the Geos, let's say. How is this, uh, because now we have these two Mm -hmm. Users can come to both entries to to find some information. Is there are the linkages? Do they share the same user base, or, or will this all be linked together, or will this maybe merge? I don't know. Uh, this is a very good question, and uh, we are now have in the Geo community the GITTT, so which is basically Geo Development Desk Team, and we are working to create a solution to have all the Geo infrastructure tools uh, uh, available in one place, let's say, to help users to get from one place all the content we have in the both uh, tools, for example. So this is what we have now for this. Okay, so working through this. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, good, so thank you for the questions. And uh, uh, all the things I presented are basically related to exploring content, but we also have another side in the GeoKnowledge Hub. So, which is basically the creation of the content 
and uh, what is going on? Mm, this is not good. Mm, sorry. Now, here. Okay, so this is another part is we use to create uh, the content available in the GeoKnowledge Hub. And to help providers to create these uh, packages, we defined a knowledge package page. So using this page, it's possible to, you know, create the package, defining metadata, uploading files, and also uh, add uh, resources inside the package. So all this stuff can be done using uh, this uh, page. And also in the creation page, it is possible to define uh, DOIs. And as this is something important, in the GeoKnowledge Hub, it is possible to define uh, DOIs for knowledge package and also for the resources available in the package. So this way, uh, users are uh, providers are able to uh, define, oh, this resource needs to have a DOI, for example, an NT to data set, something like this, uh, but this is not something required. So if you have a resource that don't need to have a DOI, it is okay too. So this is what we have. And uh, of course, after the publication of the uh, knowledge package, as I mentioned, uh, we have this tool to help providers to share with the uh, huge community the content available in the GeoKnowledge Hub and information about new knowledge packages, what is available in the package, and so on. So in this feed, we publish content related to, for example, events, and also, uh, as I mentioned, providers can request us to create a general description about knowledge packages and publish it in this feed. And another thing we have uh, implemented is the user dashboard. So uh, we implemented this because sometimes, uh, okay, we have the materials available, but uh, we don't have uh, some contextual information about that application. So for example, who used that application in the past? What are the user stories? And what are the actions related to the package? So to help providers to keep this information preserved, we defined this tool. So basically uh, this dashboard help to save existing users from knowledge packages, user stories, and also actions. So all this stuff can be managed in, a, in, in this central uh, place. And uh, in the same way as we uh, made for the exploration tools, uh, I will do a very quickly demonstration just to show you this uh, tool working. So all the, uh, as these features uh, requires to be logged in, I have here, uh, an account I created for this uh, presentation. Oh, let me go here. So I will log in using this address and also this password. And then when we access as a knowledge provider, as you can see, we have some extra options available in the page. So things like dashboard of the user and some uh, this plus button, oh, sorry where we can uh, create a new knowledge package or a resource. So let's say I want to create a, a package and using this, it is possible, as I mentioned, to upload files to this package, uh, define the metadata like package title. Uh, let me increase this uh, and fill out the metadata available for the package. And also it is possible here to use an existing DOI or if required, we can say, no, I don't have a DOI and I want to add a DOI for this package. So by doing this, it is basically, this DOI will be reserved for your package. And when the package is published, this DOI will be uh, also published and available and you can use it. So yeah, this is basically the metadata. We have some required fields. So let's say uh, we can add here some creators and we have uh, other fields like locations associated with that uh, package and all this stuff can be associated here. And uh, let me return this. And when we save the draft of this package, uh, we can you know continue editing this uh, after or I don't know, share this content with uh, contributors and we can add resources inside this package. 
So uh, we use the, uh, the same uh, page and here we can select, uh, I want to add a data set resource or a publication software or other. And when we click into add, we have the possibility to create a new uh, resource or if, for example, I'm using an existing data set available in the journal at Hub, it is possible to attach an existing uh, resource here. So uh, when we need to create a resource, it's the same structure as we have for uh, the package. So it's the same uh, metadata structure. So I can add here resource. Uh, in this case, I can specify uh, the resource type. So let's say this is an in situ data. And in the same way as we have for the package, we can create a DOI, but this is not required. It's recommended, but not required. So uh, this is possible. And then we can fill all the other uh, metadata fields. And one good uh, thing we have in this page is the possibility to import metadata from the package into the uh, resource. So let's say the resource have the same creators as we have for the package. So we can just import metadata from the package here. We can also, of course, upload files and we can manage permissions for this resource. So we can have public knowledge packages with you know, private uh, resources. This is something possible. Uh, so we can click in add. And now we have one knowledge package with one knowledge resource available on it. So we can now return and we can publish these and this will be already available with a valid DOI. So this is possible, I will not do that as this is just an example, but we can preview to visualize how this looks like if we publish this. So we have uh, some metadata and then uh, the data sets, uh, the resource we define it here. And also the DOI is also available. Uh, another thing I want to show you very quickly is the user dashboard. So for this, uh, we can access this user management page. And from here, all the things I mentioned can be uh, managed. So existing users can be controlled here, uh, stories and actions and so on. So all of this stuff can be managed using this page. And uh, return to our presentation. I don't know if, if we have questions or if we can move on. Okay, so uh, just to finish, uh, all the things I presented are based on interfaces, web interfaces, but in the GeoNolet Hub, all the features we create are also available in our REST API. So this, you know, help us to integrate, uh, external systems to integrate with the GeoNolet Hub. And we have a couple of examples. Uh, we created some custom tools to help providers in use the GeoNolet Hub. So for example, we created the book package loader, which is a CLI tool to help providers to automate the publication of knowledge packages. And we also have a harvester tool, which help providers to load content from OGC CSW interfaces as knowledge package. And uh, based on this tool, a couple of months ago, we worked together with the eShape project and they published various knowledge packages using this tool in a very automated way. And also, uh, this API is something we are studying to do the integration I mentioned between the GeoNolet Hub and the Geos platform. So this is something uh, work in progress. So we are studying how to do that. And also another thing uh, it is possible to do is knowledge packages benefit from uh, this API to, for example, create uh, reproducible solutions and automated solutions. So uh, for example, we created this package uh, for this workshop. So this is an example knowledge package based on the CTSAR package. And in this example, we have some, you know, uh, deforestation, uh, detecting deforestation using some uh, uh, time series and deep learning techniques. And basically uh, all the content required to reproduce this, uh, the results are available. And one thing we made was basically create a usage workflow where we use our API to, for example, automate the, uh, the creation of the, uh, of the environment required to reproduce the results. So this is something possible using the API. And uh, to help people to use the API and also to use the GeoNolet Hub to understand the concepts behind of it, we have our documentation. So here we explain the concept, we present the features, uh, we also uh, have a documentation of our REST API and also we have guidelines to, for example, teach how a provider can create a knowledge package, uh, some tips we also have there, so what are the requirements to create a package and so on. 
And of course, it's important to mention that the Joomla Hub is an open source platform, so all the source code uh, we develop is available in this GitHub repository, so in this organization, sorry. So if you want, you can access to follow uh, the development discussions we have. Uh, you can also collaborate with us. We'll be very happy to have you there. And of course, our uh, tech stack is, al is also open. So all the tools we use to keep the journal hub uh, running is open. So to our search index, for example, we use open search, we have Postgres SQL and so on. And the core of the journal hub is, for example, the Nvenu RDM. So this is an open source tool uh, created by a community led by CERN. And uh, this tool provides uh, to us a very uh, matrix uh, set of features, and we use these features as our base to create uh, the GeoNolet Hub. And just something very interesting, in a couple of weeks, the Invino RGM will be the new base for the Zenodo, for example. So this is something uh, we also have and we are always using. And for our infrastructure, we are using uh, AWS, so we have uh, things like EC2 machines, S3 buckets, RDS databases, and we manage uh, the whole backup using Amazon backup, so this is what we have. And also to keep uh, things easy and manageable, we use some GitHub actions to uh, automate the deploys, new versions, and also our whole infrastructure is managed using Terraform, so uh, our infrastructure is basically described it using code, and this helps us to keep things controlled. And uh, very quickly about the content available in the journal at Hub, we have now 108 knowledge packages with 531 knowledge resources. So we started uh, this operation, as I mentioned, last year, so we're very happy with this, and we are collaborating with uh, various new work program activities. And of course, the community is already accessing this. So as we started this uh, in last year, this operation, I mean, uh, we had some measurements and in the last 10 months, we received something around 21,000 views from various countries. So we're very happy with this initial result. And as our future steps, we have the, uh, the goal to engage with your work program activities, to have more AO applications available in our library, and also to uh, help the community to know what is available in the journal hub. We are already planning some webinars on the available packages. And also, we, our goal is to continue adding more features to help the community to use the journal hub. So, for example, now we are now implementing a reviewers module to help us to manage who is revising the content available in the journal hub and to make these people visible, for example, because we already have some people collaborating with us in this reviewer uh, part. And our goal is to uh, uh, add this visibility to people who is collaborating with us. So yeah, this is basically what I have to share with you. Thank you. I don't know if you have questions or time. For your presentation. Um, I have two small questions. The first about um, yeah, when I saw the, the page to upload things, I immediately thought, oh, this is Zenodo actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah. And it, indeed, you mentioned that uh, in some ways linked to Zenodo. Uh, so I was wondering couldn't you use Zenodo to deposit resources, software, uh, literature, and so on? and just build on it the capacity to run the workflows. So why did you, why did you have decided to create all the Zenodo-like, let's say, uh, data uh, knowledge package, let's say, if there was already Zenodo and actually you are quite maybe involved by uh, in Vino RPM probably. Mm -hmm. So when this General question. And second, I don't understand the role of Amazon and uh, other uh, big uh, tech, de um, big tech uh, in this project, because you said it's all open source indeed, uh, but then you mentioned infrastructures mm -hmm. uh, as Amazon Elastic Computer Cloud. So are you using Amazon behind the screen or it's a kind of only for the backup or for other, to make it more reusable to other? Okay. Uh, good. So, 
Uh, about the first question, uh, we already have some knowledge packages uh, publishing content in the Zenodo and creating the specific parts in the Geo Knowledge Hub. So linking things in, uh, we have our package, but the data, for example, is available in Zenodo and the resource came from Zenodo. So this is something possible to do and some providers are doing this because uh, they have some requirements from, from projects to publish in Zenodo and they are creating the structure using GeoNolet Hub, but with the content there. So this is something possible. And for our infrastructure, we use uh, all the tools is open source. So we are not, you know, uh, vendor specific. We don't use any kind of this stuff, but to keep the GeoNolet Hub running, we are using AWS. So this is something because we don't have, you know, home servers or things like that. So we use the, the infrastructure to, to keep it running, but this is not something required. So we are actually trying to find uh, different platforms to help us in this, in, in the host, the GeoNolite Hub. So uh, uh, AWS is just a, you know, a solution we find, but we can change this. So, because all the tools we are using behind the scenes uh, do not depend or don't need to be uh, AWS. So. Thank you.